Okay, today we're going to learn all about matrices. Now, what is a matrix? Uh, it's going to be a very, very useful tool for you. You'll notice that one of the problems you had, and I'm going to, I'm saying this to everybody, the problems you've been having mostly with trying to work out the currents of a fairly complicated circuit is that you end up starting off with something like possibly seven to ten equations. And that can be very overwhelming. You don't, because uh, even beyond that, you start adding up equations and then suddenly you have more than that. You have so many that it's hard to keep track. Well, I have a solution for you. You're going to love it. Well, honestly, at first you're going to look and go like, what is all this you're making me do, Mr. Gale? But I promise you that this is actually a pretty useful tool and something you're going to want to use in the future. So let's just jump right into this and uh, draw ourselves a matrices. Now I'm just going to draw something uh, randomly here. Uh, let's see, 1 pi 0 5, negative 7, 11, and uh, there, that's a matrix. Now, what, what have I done here? That's the question. I have drawn uh, basically a, a 2 by 3 matrix. And you'll notice that all I'm doing is making a grid of numbers. Uh, they can be any number I want, uh, but you'll find that we'll generally want to keep with uh, pretty basic numbers, uh, sort of whole numbers at the start. And there'll be a reason why we'll want to start with that because it gets ugly after a while. Uh, but now what is the two and the three referring to? You may notice just by looking at it, you can probably tell two refers to the number of rows and three refers to the number of columns. And so if I had something else, let's say this, that would be a one by one, one row, one column. Uh, let's say one, two, three. This would be what? What would this be? Well, I've got one row three columns. So that's generally the gist of like what I'm trying to do here is I'm just trying to create a matrix that is a grid work of numbers. Now, how does this help me out with a system of equations? Well, let me, uh, let me get you there with just going through the, uh, what we call the three main matrix row operations. Because before I can talk about using this for linear equations, we need to know what we can do with matrices. And there is basically three main matrices operations. Okay. There are three main things I can do. And with this, I can really do a lot now. So the first thing I can do is I can switch any two rows. This is the first thing I can do. I'm going to give you an example. Let's just simply uh, start ourselves off with something here. Uh, four, eight, three. Uh, two, four, five. Uh, now I've got these pretty bunched up. Normally you wouldn't draw them so bunched up because you might get confused and say, is that a 24 or something? Uh, not so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch two of the rows. So let's just simply rewrite this now. And I'm going to say this is now, let's switch the first two rows. So I'm going to say two, four, five, four, eight, three, seven, one, two. Now you can do this without actually harming the matrix in any way, uh, which is kind of interesting. Now, how would I write what's happening here? Now I could actually have a notation for this and it's row one has now switched with row two. And that's how I would write that. I just simply say, I have switched the two rows. And as you can see, these, these two over here, uh, they're now switched to places. The rows have been switched. Now, is that a big deal? Eh, well, you'll see in the future that that's a useful tool to have. But right now, you might not even know why you would even bother. Uh, what's the bigger thing you can do? The, I can multiply uh, a row. And I can do this just to one row if I want. I can do it to a bunch of rows. But the idea is that I can multiply row by a non zero don't want to multiply by zero that doesn't help me at all but i can roll, multiply by any any number uh that's a constant so let's get an example of that uh i am going to give myself another row let's say six six one i'm just making these up by the way two three zero four five nine and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply, let's say, the second row by three. Okay, second row by three. So that means the first row doesn't change. The third row doesn't change. I'm not even going to touch them. I'm only going to multiply the middle row by uh, three. So in that case, uh, let's see, two times three, 
becomes 6. 3 times 3, that becomes 9. And 0 times 3 gives me 0. Now, how would I write this? Well, that actually, um, all I say is that 3R2, the second row multiplied by 3, is now going to replace what is originally just simply R2. So if you look at that notation, that kind of makes sense. What I'm saying is that this first value is now going to take the place of R2. Now this actually, think about this now. I haven't gotten myself a new line. And I multiplied this by 3, but I didn't give myself now a fourth row to include that. What I did is I replaced, and this becomes a really, really useful thing. You're going to find out in a little bit, but i got to do the last rule. I can add one row to another. And I also will do the whole thing where I replace it. So I'm going to use a, let me use a little matrices here. Let's say a, just simply a 2 by 3. So 2, 3, 4, 0, 8, 1. Now I'm going to write the, um, let me write the actual notation first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say R1. I'm going to add R2. Well, I only have. And that will replace, that will replace the second row. In other words, I will add the two together and then row two will become that summed up two rows. So the top row won't change at all. Two, three, four. But the bottom row is now these two added together. So let's just see. Two plus zero. And I'm just adding, notice what I'm doing. I'm just adding up the columns. So two plus zero is two. Three plus eight, eleven. Four plus one, five. And there we go. Now, those are the three main matrices operations. Those are the ones you want to remember what you can do. Now, I've added in the notation, but you're probably never going to actually write that as you're doing it. But it's something to remember that if anyone wanted you to do proper linear algebra matrices operations, that's actually the conventions that we use when we're talking about that stuff. But like I said, you'll just simply be doing that stuff. The key thing here is that as you go through matrices operations, try to be careful about not getting mixed up along the way. You can do one operation at a time, and that usually makes things a lot easier. Now, the big thing. How do I make this work for solving a linear equation? Now, uh, in this case, I'm going to be looking at, uh, let's look at something. Let's say, let's just give ourselves a linear equation. So we're going to say x uh, plus y plus z equals 3. Uh, let's give some other ones, say x plus 2y plus 3z equals 0. And then let's say, you know what? I'm not even going to say that. Let's not say that. Let's actually get right to what we're trying to do. Yeah, I can say x's and y's. But really, what you're interested in is like, say, different currents. So let's just simply say that uh, i1 plus i2 plus I3 equals 3, let's say, volts. So that would be something I could have gotten from Kirchhoff's law. Um, not like Now, I could have used also a, that could have come from a junction rule, like where I have the summation of the different currents that gives me zero or, or they give each other. Now, the important thing what I'm going to do, though, is that no matter what, every single row I make, I'll make sure that each one is lined up properly where all the I1s are, for example, in this case, all the I1s are the ones in front and, and the first column. Then the second column will only be I2s and I3s. And then after the equal sign, I'm going to put all the total voltage if there is any. So I am arranging this in a way, and you're, maybe a lot of you are going, oh, I see why, I can see a matrices happening here. Let me just finish up and say, let's say I've got, well, I've got three variables, so I'm going to need minimum three equations. I've got three variables, I need three equations. So let's just say I've done this from some circuit, uh, two times I2 plus three I3 equals zero volts. Let's say that was a nice little uh, zero. And then let's do a last one. What was I1 plus uh, 3 I2 plus 4 I3. And that gave me, let, let's do something a little weird here, minus 2 volts. The minuses don't matter, okay, just so it's clear. The minuses, you want to include them, 
you want to make sure you know where they are because any of these could have had minuses all over the place and there's nothing wrong with that. So what are we going to do? We are going to uh, turn this into, turn into a matrices. Okay, so let's turn it into a matrix. Now, if you look at this, I'm going to turn this actually into a slight, what we call an augmented. Uh, so, and let's, let's, let's change that word there. Hang on now. Uh, and augmented matrices. And I, now all I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a little something so that it's really obvious, uh, about where that equal sign is. That's really all I'm doing. That's really all I'm doing. Uh, I'll show you. So let's just turn it into something. Okay, so if I looked at this, I've got my, like, I clearly have my rows and my columns already ready. So I1. Now in this case, all I'm writing down is the coefficients in front. That's all I'm doing. So I don't care about the variables. The variables have been already indicated by which row and which column they're in. So I1, well, that's 1 times I1. So that's a 1. Then I got I2. That's a 1. Then I got I3. That's a 1. Now let's go to the next down. I've got I1 is a 1. I2 in this case is a 2. I3 is a 3. What we got in the last row here? 1, 3, 4. Now this is called an augmented matrix because I'm going to make a little thing here where I go, there's an equal sign on each of these. No, 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 no. I'm going to make a little line. And then I put the last values on the other side of that line. 3, 0, and negative 2. So this is an augmented matrix because I'm kind of doing a little extra something here so that it's really clear uh, where the values are and where the variables are. So when you write these, when you work out your equations, what you want to do is you want to get your voltage on one side and then all the different currents on the other. And this makes it a lot easier for how you want to do this. Now, what do we want to do? Uh, we want to turn this into, we want to turn it into, now here's, here's a word here. Enjoy the fun word here. A reduced, reduced row echelon form. Now that's the word that it, that it, that you're actually trying to do now you don't really need to know that word but that is technically what you're trying to do now you're going to try to turn it into reduced row echelon form so the idea is to have each column having only one non zero non-zero value equal to one. Now, what does this mean? Bear with me and watch how I do it. Okay. So I'm just going to start with my initial column. So I'm going to, I'm going to write it again. Actually, maybe I could just copy and paste. Let me see if I can do that. Oh yeah, I can totally do that. All right. So let's just do that. We, okay. So here's where I'm going to put that up there. That's on a new layer. Let's start. So I'm trying to make what's called a reduced row echelon form. So I'm just going to explain that a little because I know that's a little confusing, but let's just look at this. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pick now first in my first column and I'm going to say, which one of these do I want to keep that I want to just remain there and then turn the others into zero. Now it doesn't really matter in this case. So I'm just going to say, I want this to remain as one and then this is going to turn into zero and this is going to turn into zero. Now, how do I do that? I'm going to use those matrix row uh, operations to do it. So what I'm going to do, let's just see what I can do. I know that right now I don't have to do anything to the top row. I just totally don't have to do anything. I can just simply leave it as is because it's already one. So one, 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 let's draw the line, three. This remains, this remains because it's one. I want that to be one, but now I want the one in the second row to be a zero. Now, how am I going to do that? Well, um, I would take, let me see, I could take R2, I could subtract R1, 
and then that would replace R2. So R2 is now going to become uh, R2 minus R1. So let's look at that. That would be um, 1 minus 1. Well, there's my 0, and that's why I did it, because I want 0 there. So 1 minus 1 is 0. So R2 minus R1, I get the 0. But what do I get with the rest of them? Well, they don't all become zeros, that's for sure. So 2 minus 1, well, that's a 1. 3 minus 1, 2. 0 minus 3, that's a minus 3. That's what I'm trying to do. That's the key. So let's try the next row and see if we can keep going with this. So, well, looks like I could do the same thing. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. Since this isn't, they're not influencing each other, I can do this all kind of together as two different operations. So now R3 minus, well, let's just subtract R1 again. I could have subtracted R2 as well if I want. I could have done R3 minus R2 because 1 minus 1 is also 0. But in this case, I'm just going to, it doesn't really matter which one I do. But I'm going to just simply say, okay, let's go for it. That is now going to be my R, my new R3 is going to be R3 minus R1. So, once again, 1 minus 1, there's my 0. 3 minus 1, 2. 4 minus 1, 3. And negative 2 minus 3, that's negative 5. Now notice, this is what I'm aiming for. This is what I'm trying to get. Look at that. A 1 and everything else 0. So I've gotten my first column done. And notice, no new lines. I'm not creating a whole bunch of equations, no new equations to work with. It's only the ones I started with, and I'm just replacing as I go. And this is what you're going to find is actually a pretty, pretty useful little thing to do. So I'll just simply uh, take this one over. Let's just copy paste again. Copy paste. So now I'm starting again with this new matrix that I've made. I've made this new matrix. So now what's my plan? My plan is now to move along and get to the next column. Okay, so I got my next column. And what I want to do now is I'm interested in picking uh, either row two or row three. Now, row I don't want to do it again with row one because I already got a value on that row. This is the only place I'm going to want to see a value for this row. It's been done. So now what I need to do is I got to take one of the other two rows. Now, the easiest one looks like it's going to be row two again. So not again. This is my first time doing it. Here's row two. So I'm going to leave that one alone I'm because it's already at a one here. I already got a one. Fantastic. That's exactly what I want. So I'm going to do a 0, 1, 2, negative 3. That remains the same. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to reduce uh, the 1 here and the 2 here and turn them into zeros, right? Because that's all I want. One non-zero value equal to 1 and everything else equal to 0 in that column. So how are we going to do it? Well, let's try this again. Um, I'm probably... Now, I don't know what you think is the best thing to do, but uh, let me show you. I'm going to take R1. I'm going to subtract R2. Now, you might ask, scale, why did you do it that way? Uh, mainly because, and so that's going to become my R1. Notice what's going to happen with my first value here. I'm going to take 1 minus 0, and it leaves me with 1. Now, if I did it the other way, let's say I did R2 minus R1, and that becomes R1. That would be 0 minus 1, and then suddenly this becomes minus 1. I don't want it to be. I want to keep it as positive 1 if I can. Uh, not a big deal. If it did become minus 1, I could later on just multiply that whole row by negative 1, and this would come back to positive 1. But why do that? Why not just simply do this so that this stays as a positive 1? Okay, so let's look at the next thing. Uh, so I'm doing R1 minus R2. So 1 minus 1, there's my 0. That's what I wanted. 1 minus 2, that's going to give me a negative 1. And then I got a, a 3 minus minus 3. So that actually becomes 6. Okay, so be careful about those minuses, minuses. That, you know, that does come up. Now what am I going to do with the bottom uh, level? That one's a little different because I've got a 2 now. So... How could I do this? Well, I could take R3, but I could subtract 2, 2R2. Two 
So I could double R2 and subtract that from that, and that would give me the zero that I want. So notice I'm doing actually kind of like two operations together at this point. But because I've written it down here, it's a little easier to see what I'm up to. So just if you think about it, then I'm going to take, let me see. So R3 minus 2R2. So in this case, uh, 0 minus zero minus 2 times 0. Well, I've still got 0. That's good. Then I got 2 minus 2 times 1. That gives me the 0. Now a little trickier here. Let me see. I'm going to have 3 minus 2 times 2. 3 minus 4 minus 1. And then the last thing is I got minus 5 minus double minus three. So how does that work? That's actually going to be minus five plus six. I got one. So be a little careful about that. Okay, once again, I got my next one. I'm chugging along. Now you might think, wow, this is taking a long time. I guarantee this actually will take a shorter time than what you've been doing already. So bear with me on this one. Like I said, matrices are one of these things where you get enough practice and you can do these so quickly. All right, so now what I'm going to do, whoops, that's not what I want. I want a pen. Here we go. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to make one more row. I'm getting my last row. Now, it's obvious which one I have to use. I have to take this, this little sucker down here. So I'm actually going to do um, three things, three things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what? I want, I want this. This is my last value. It's going to be in the third column. It's going to be the third row that's going to be given the treatment. But I've got a negative one. So what I would really like to do right off the bat is uh, I'm going to actually take uh, R3. But I'm going to say, you know what? M multiply by negative one, and that's going to replace my R3. So I might as well do it over here just so that I can remember. That means this will become positive one. This becomes negative one. Yay! Now I got my one just like the others um, before I even started. So that's actually nice and useful. Now I've got my positive one. I don't have to worry about it. So remember, I'm leaving this row alone. Zero, zero, one. Let's put the line down. Negative one. Hold on. Negative one. There we go. Okay, so let's go through it. What do we got to do? Well, uh, first things first, uh, I need to get rid of the first row. But the first row is negative one. So if I just add that together, I'll get my zero. So perfect. That'll be R1 plus R3, that'll give me my new R1. Okay, so 0 plus, let me see, go over here. 0 plus 1, 1. 0 plus 0, 0. 1 plus negative 1, 0. And negative 1 plus 6, that's 5. That was easy. Last one, how do I do it? Once again, I want to replace R2. So if I did R2 minus 2 times this one, that's going to get me what I want. So I'm going to say R2 minus 2 times R3, and that'll be my new R2. Hopefully, I'm, I know I'm going fast, but you can always pause this video and look at it a little more carefully just to make sure you see what I did. So I took R2, and I'm subtracting 2 times R3. 0 minus 2 times 0. Well, yay. So then my 0. 1 minus 2 times 0, that's still my 1, right? And you notice that's why I did it this way, because I do want that 1 to remain a 1. So be careful about what you decide to do here. You want to do it in a way where you don't change what you've already got here, which is beautiful. You want the 1s and the zeros to just to remain zeros and 1s. Uh, let's look at the last row. What do I got? This is really the thing I'm trying to do here. I'm going to take uh, R2, and I'm going to subtract 2 times 1. That gives me 0. What about that last thing? Uh, I'm going to take negative 3, and I'm going to subtract 2 times negative 1. What do I get? That's actually going to give me negative 1. There we go. So what do I got? What do I got? I got this really strange little thing here. Um, this is, let's just, you know what? Let's just do this. Pop, pop. I'm going to turn everything else off. This is what I got left with. Let's take a look at that. Take a look at that, because if you didn't realize it already, you have actually now solved your entire thing. Because let's now change it back to equations. Change it to equations. What do we got? 1 times what? Well, the first row was I1. So I1 plus, well, plus 0 I2 plus 0 I3, so I can ignore those. That equals 5. Nice! 
Then what do I got? Second row, that's an I2, and that equals negative 1. And last row, I3 equals negative 1. And I go, oh my god, this is awesome. I just have to do that. I reduce this into a form that can easily come back with all the answers I need. So, simple story short, this is uh, basically how you do it. You, you need a bit of practice. I recommend that you um, try out some equations that you know have solutions uh, and then give them a shot. See what, see what happens. See if you can do that uh, yourself a few times. It definitely works. Uh, with anything you're doing in circuits because the circuits must have answers. Now, they're not going to be as pretty as this, obviously. You're going to get uh, some problems if uh, you end up with, say, 0.32 amps and stuff like that. So it'll be a little more trickier, but the basic idea is that if you start with this setup, you have a really nice way of kind of organizing it that should sort of give you a leg up in, in controlling the madness along the way of trying to solve these equations. Uh, if you want, let me see, hang on. So what we got here is a, uh, uh, a online linear equation solver that uses matrices to solve everything. Uh, this can help you just make sure that when you do something, you can, you got the right answer. So let's, uh, for a moment, just simply look at the one we did. What did we do? We said, okay, there was, uh, 1, 1, 1, and 3. Now, how would I write this down here? You notice it says here, values are delimited by, I could say spaces. I'm going to use commas. So what I can do is I can put in the matrix uh, A, and then the right-hand side is where I'm putting the augmented right side. So in this case, I would write this as 1, comma, 1, comma, 1, and then return. I'm going to the next 1, comma, 2, comma, 3. And then what was it? 1, 3, 4. And you can refer back to the earlier part of the video to see what I'm doing there. And then I put in uh, what was the, the voltages in a row too. 3, 0, and negative 2. And now that I've got that there, let me see. Oop, no. Then I just simply say solve. Let's see if it works out for us. Hopefully it does. Oops, you can't see that. Let me hang on now. Aye, bring it over. There we go. So you can see, what did we get for answers before? You can see down here it says 5, negative 1, negative 1, and there's the ones that I got in the when we did it ourselves. Uh, so you, you can happily go to that uh, if you want and uh, try it out yourself, just, just as a confirmation that you're doing it right. Uh, I would suggest simply going online and looking for some systems of equations, trying to do them by a matrices rather than the traditional uh, way that you've been doing it so far with just algebra. And I guarantee that with a little bit of practice, you're going to love this stuff. Uh, okay, if you have any other questions, please, uh, please ask me.